Press with Flo Villamino. Hello Hi, again. Uh, now, a lot of focus on the Islamist militant group ISIS that's uh, changed its name. It's declared that it's established a caliphate. Um, lots of people trying to get to grips with that information in the papers today. That's right. The Wall Street Journal is focusing on this in their editorial today, saying that Osama bin Laden's political project is beginning to take form in Iraq, it says, welcome to the new Middle East Caliphate, and it encourages readers to brush up on their, well, Islamic history and terminology. Basically, it reminds us that a caliphate is a state whose leader is considered the religious and political successor to the Prophet Muhammad and is thus the sovereign of all Muslims. And the Wall Street Journal says this is a major setback for the American interests and, uh, well, security in general. And it doesn't seem like President Barack Obama has a plan. The, this article points out that there is a little bit of hope, that, and that's that ISIS has an Achilles heel, and that's their penchant to go a little bit too far and to alienate people. But this article says it would be reckless to count on that as a strategy. And uh, I think a lot of people, probably some of our viewers included, are still trying to understand how this has all happened so quickly. It's really been a matter of weeks. That's right. And there's a very interesting article I really recommend today in Slate that looks at one element that might contribute <clears throat> to ISIS's success in the region, and that's climate change. Now, really? this might come as a surprise, but this article uh, well, spoke to some analysts from the Center for Climate and Security, and it points out that there could be connections between climate change and the conflict in Iraq. Now, how does this work? Well, basically, increasing temperatures and the drying of agricultural land, so basically drought, uh, is seen as assisting the destabilization of Iraq, and basically ISIS jumped in and took advantage of the chaos. Now, on top of that, this article points out that recent research suggests a strong connection between high temperatures and political instability. This is very interesting. They say that the cause, according to these studies, the cause is that uh, there's a link between dehydration and a decreased cognitive performance and increased levels of anxiety. And it points out that it's been unusually hot in Iraq this year. So all this could contribute to what we're seeing right now. That's certainly a very different angle on the story, isn't it? Uh, we're going to move over to Hong Kong. We've been reporting on how nearly 800,000 residents there participated in an unofficial referendum. Uh, that Beijing said was actually illegal. Now, this is organised by pro-democracy activists, and it was about uh, choosing their new leaders in the future. Absolutely, and The Guardian is taking a closer uh, look today. You can see a photo of some protesters uh, there, uh, and there, this article says that there's a, a rally that's going to be held to, tomorrow that's expected to draw some 500,000 people. Now, these campaigners basically want the public to be able to elect Hong Kong's leader, the chief executive. And if you take a look at that photo there, that, that white piece of paper that protester yeah, has in her mouth, is actually the white paper. This is a, uh, an official document that Beijing published earlier this month, which lays out the red lines for Hong Kong. You could read about it here in the South China Morning Post, a Hong Kong paper. It basically reiterates the whole one country, two systems policy and reaffirms total control over Hong Kong. But as you were saying, the Chinese media is also reacting to this referendum, to these protests tomorrow. This is uh, on the front page of China Daily Today. It's talking about how the Hong Kong chief has said that this poll has no legal standing. And in its editorial, uh, China Daily really lashes out against the group that's organizing uh, this, uh, the, well, the, the, the rally and the, the online um, referendum, the Occupy Central with love and peace. It calls uh, this a radical faction. And as you can see here, it says that this whole thing is unacceptable. Sort of reminiscent of uh, things that have happened in Ukraine recently. They've had some referendums that have been declared unofficial and illegal, haven't they? Um, things rather different than now in Ukraine and protesters uh, calling for an end to a ceasefire that's been called by the president. I think that's uh, caught a lot of people off guard and su surprised a lot of people. That's right. It's on the front page of uh, the Wall Street Journal today that has a photo of this protest. Now, that uh, ceasefire is set to ex expire today anyway, but the Wall Street Journal takes a closer look at how in the West uh, anger and impatience is growing over the government's peacemaking efforts. And I pulled out another article, this time in uh, The Guardian, that's focusing on Ukraine and something very unusual. And it's a, a crowdfunding campaign. Crowdfunding is a way of, of uh, well, raising money online. It's been used to fund films, bands, etc. Well, uh, Ukraine, this is an article that point out that there, uh, there's a group in Ukraine that has raised money online to fund the country's first drone. Oh, wow. And this drone will be used for reconnaissance above 
these rebel provinces that we've been hearing about along the Russian border. Very interesting indeed. Thank you very much, Flo Villamino, there with a look through the international newspapers. Coming up after the break here on Life in Paris, updates on all our top news stories. Plus, we're talking to businessmen and ordinary Ukrainians after the president there, Petro Poroshenko, finally signed the country's trade pact with Europe. Their reactions coming up. <laughs> 